On the rear of the SD9 are the audio and peripheral connections. So let's take a look at what the SD9 provides. Starting on the left are the power supplies. The SD9 can be fitted with either one or two supplies, and if you have two, they are hot swappable, so no need to power down to change out a PSU. Just above the power supplies are the MIDI and GPIO connections. The MIDI is standard in, out and through connections. You might use this for changing patches on external effects units or triggering sound effect systems like QLab. The two GPIs and two GPOs are on quarter inch jack. You might set these up for a foot switch to trigger a macro or trigger external events. Moving over to the right, there are two rows of XLRs. The top row has two AES inputs and eight mic line inputs. Below that are the equivalent outputs, two AES and eight analog line out. These are your local ins and outs when you're routing signals. Along the bottom are the connections for remote racks and word clock. There's standard word clock in and out on BNC connectors and you'll need this for clocking external gear to the desk or integrating the desk as part of a larger system. To the right of this is the standard MADI port, again on BNC connectors. All the Digico range use standard MADI and this can be used for connecting any of the Digico range of racks or a MADI based recording device. A little later in this chapter, we'll show you how to set up connections for your recorder. To the right of the MADI ports are the two Digico D-Rack interfaces. These are on CAT5 connectors and a single CAT5 cable carries the audio to and from the remote D-Rack. Each D-Rack has 32 inputs and up to 16 outputs so using both ports gives you 64 inputs and up to 32 outputs. The last few connections on the rear are the PC connections, USB, keyboard and mouse, VGA monitor, network connections and the lit light ports. The keyboard and mouse should always be connected. It's used for data entry, naming channels and snapshots and it's sometimes quicker to type with the real keyboard rather than the on-screen keyboard, especially when setting the desk up. The VGA output is for connecting a standard PC monitor. We call it the overview screen, and it acts like a meter bridge, providing much more of an overview of all levels on all channels. You'll need to have this monitor connected before you power the desk on. There's more on the network setup in the advanced connections chapter. As you probably know, you can now run Waves plugins on the SD range of desks. While all of the control for the plugins is handled by the SD console, the audio processing is taken care of by a dedicated processor, the SoundGrid server. So, we need to be able to get audio to this server from the desk and also provide control information for adjusting plugin parameters. A Waves enabled SD9 has an additional CAT5 port. This port carries the audio to and from the console to the SoundGrid server. The control element of the Wave system uses the console's standard PC network connection. To combine these signals, standard PC networking hardware is used, a gigabit switch. So there are three connections, SD9 Waves port to the switch, SD9 standard PC network to the switch, and the SoundGrid server to the switch. Once all your physical audio connections are made, you'll need to configure your session for these connections. So, on your master screen, touch the Setup menu and select Audio I.O. The panel that opens is divided into four main sections. The left-hand side of the panel lists your physical ports, the local I.O., the two DRAC CAT5 connections and the standard MADI port. Touching the ports selects them and the currently selected port is highlighted blue. The top strip allows you to name and configure your selected port or rack. The large graphic in the middle of the screen represents the selected rack. Touching this picture selects individual sockets and cards so that you could name and configure them. Often, in an install or touring system, naming sockets makes setup and routing quicker and easier. The bottom section of this panel is the setup panel for the selected card in a rack or socket. Let's look at these in a little more detail. The audio I.O. configuration in a session needs to match the connected hardware. If you're using the standard MADI to connect a Digico rack, then select port 3. Then, on the top strip, touch the down pointing arrow under device type and select the appropriate device from the list. 
Now press the big red Conform All Ports button in the bottom left-hand corner of the panel. The console will automatically configure all your ports to match the connected hardware. It's worth selecting each port in turn and checking that everything looks right. You can manually configure the hardware too. With a rack selected, touch one of the cards within the rack. Now, in the bottom Card Setup section, select the correct card from the drop-down list. On a D-Rack, you can only do this for the second output card. The rest of the rack is a fixed configuration. But for Digi-Racks and other MADI connected racks, each card needs to be set correctly. You can now name your ports, cards and sockets. If you have two D-Racks connected, you might, for example, name them Stage Left and Stage Right. With the first D-Rack port selected, touching the first socket, here labelled 1, Mic 1, selects that socket. Now, in the bottom section of the screen, we can rename the port, for example, call it Kick, and we can rename the first card. Here, I've called it Drums. Each card is eight sockets, inputs or outputs. On the D-Rack, they are arranged in horizontal rows, and for the larger racks or standard MADI connections, the cards are arranged vertically. You'll see that once you have a socket selected, the properties for that socket can be configured, phantom power, pads, etc. The final part of the basic audio I.O. setup is to configure a record copy. This is the Copy Audio 2 function in the top right-hand corner of the audio I.O. panel. Here's how it works. From the port list, select your first D-Rack, probably port 1. Now from the drop-down list in the Copy Audio 2 menu, select port 3, which is a standard MADI port by default. With this copy in place, any audio coming to the console down the first Cat5 port from the D-Rack is copied straight back out to the first 32 channels of the MADI stream. Connect your recorder to the MADI port and hit record, and you're capturing the audio without any processing. The copy is post mic gain, but not processed by the desk in any way, a recording of the raw sources. If you have two D-Racks, you can copy both of them to the MADI port. Then you get all 32 channels from the first D-Rack and the first 24 channels from the second D-Rack, making up the 56 channels of a standard MADI stream. Once you've recorded the audio, maybe during sound check, you will need to listen back to it. You can do this with the press of a single button, the Listen to Copied Audio button in the top right corner. When you press this, all channels on the desk that were routed from the stage racks are invisibly repatched to take audio from the playback. Then you can carry on working, EQing, setting monitor mixes and levels, as if the musicians are still playing. You don't have to repatch channels. All your processing and effects sends remain the same. And when you're done, pressing the blue button, now called listening to copied audio, switches off this playback stream and you're back working with the live sources from stage. For more detailed information on the connection setups, see the Advanced Connections chapter.